Hello and welcome to this review of a really excellent classic sci-fi book, Inverted World by Christopher Priest. I was so excited that I found this recently that it jumped way ahead of my reading list. This is an old pan. I think people who know about books call these covers a livery and they call this livery in particularly lozenge because the title and the author inside these lozenges. I used to read a lot of Christopher Priest. I think I had almost all of his books and I think they were almost all in this lozenge style pan. Over the years of moving, I got rid of them. I'm deeply regretful of that. I don't think I've ever had Inverted World though before. I think this is a new one for me. So here in Australia, it's winter. I'm thoroughly sick of winter. It can go away. But one joy of winter is that after dinner, you feel perfectly justified in sitting down in your armchair and reading a book and doing nothing else. And that's the perfect way to read Inverted World because what I remember about Christopher Priest was true. He's a marvellous author. He's got all the writer's skills. He uses them well and it really comes through in his writing in a way that some authors, especially a lot of modern authors, are more slapdash about the actual writing style part of their craft, not Christopher Priest. They're immaculate. He's written for a whole heap of things. He's an English writer. That might be part of it. I really do like my English authors. And even though he hasn't written prolifically, each single, single one of them is a marvellous. Oh, I just found out he died this year. Oh, what a shame. Oh, well, we have books by him. It is now a new mission to read all of them. So in this book, we start with our main protagonist. That is Halward Mann. Halward is not an easy name to remember. I keep thinking of him as Howard in my head, but whatever. Halward Mann lives in the city and everyone in the city is raised in a creche. At a certain age, they leave the creche and they may or may not, I think a lot of them don't, but some of them become um, able to join one of the guilds. Hellwood is proposed for the future Futures Guild by his father, who's also in the guild. He doesn't know his father very well. He's never met his mother, raised in creche. Like I said that already. Now, once these kids grow up he's also he's also given um a betrothal by again by his father to a girl he knows because she was in creche with him but not well and priest does this thing where he gets all these different bits of information and he weaves them together until you've got this artistic construct of knowledge about the world you're in it's really impressive it's a style of writing that i really love and you don't see a lot of authors, I don't think, doing it quite as well as him. So once Hellwood becomes a future surveyor, first of all, he has to serve as an apprenticeship. As an apprentice, he gets to leave the city and he's really excited about that because no one from the creche gets to leave the city. No one no really knows what's outside the city. The education is based on planet Earth education, though we learn this throughout the book. They're in the city of Earth, which is traveling over a separate star. And we don't really know why it's traveling for a long time. And we find out during his, his apprenticeship, he's apprenticed to a different guild that's responsible for laying down the lines along which the city travels. And he finds out that everyone in the guild is obsessively fascinated by the optimum. The optimum is a point ahead of the city, which is always moving. For the city to be on optimum is best. But falling behind too much is bad. They have to navigate rivers. So there's a bridge building guild. And a person in the bridge building guild is the father of the woman he marries. That's a plot part earlier in Victoria, earlier in the novel. Um, I don't want to give away too much on this one. I think giving away too much would be 
sad for the future reader and I very much hope to convince you to be a future reader of Inverted World because it's a marvellous book. It does so many things so well. But you can think of it as three parts. The first part is where Howard Mann is leaving Crace. He doesn't know that much about his world. He only knows what he's learnt. He's out for the first time. He's finding out all these things. And a lot of the things the guilds don't tell them, like what happens when you fall too be far behind, away past, what happens when you go ahead. There's a whole heap of timey-wimey stuff. There's a whole heap of hinted at but never expressly laid out physics of a world that is probably not, as he discovers slowly, is probably not a sphere like Earth. We never find out where or how or anything like that. He never does at all until right at the end. Then there's, that's sort of probably the first part of the book. And at first you don't know what you're getting into with this, really. Certainly not by reading the back of it. Which I didn't do before reading it, by the way. But I just read the, the title and, and the author, to be honest. Then you've got the centre part. At this point, Hellwood Man is becoming... A guild member, he's travelling more, he's doing more things, he's finding out more, he's also finding himself more disenfranch disenfranchised from the city. And at the end, you have a third part with a culmination. And honestly, the ending of this book is, non is in many ways ambiguous and open, but I can't think of a better ending. And that's totally down to Priest's writing. I'm going to read you a quote from Priest, if I can find it, that I tagged. Ah, yes. So, it's a long quote. Bear with me. It's from his book, The Prestige. I wonder if the movie The Prestige was based upon that. Probably. Quite possibly. <laughs> Every great magic trick consists of three parts or acts. You think you know this, don't you? But, bear with me. The first part is called the pledge. The magician shows you something ordinary, a deck of cards, a bird or a man. He shows you this object. Perhaps he asks you to inspect it, to see if it is indeed real, unaltered, normal. But of course it probably isn't. The second act is called the turn. The magician takes the ordinary something and makes it do something extraordinary. Now you're looking for the secret. But you won't find it. Because, of course, you're not really looking. You don't really want to know. You want to be fooled. But you can't clap yet. Because making something disappear isn't enough. You have to bring it back. That's why every magic trick has a third act. The hardest part. The part we call the prestige. And that, my friends, is in a nutshell the, pl the plot. The plotting element of this book. Not the actual plot, but the plotting element. You have the first part, that's the pledge. That's the first one where we're following Hellwood Man around his world as he learns about it. We have the second. The second part, the turn, where all of a sudden the ordinary world becomes extraordinary and weird and we don't really know what's happening. And you're looking for the secret, but I, well, I wasn't looking too hard. I admit that I personally just want, to, want the ride. I don't need to find out the secret, but I don't think you will in this book on your own either. You're going to be looking in the wrong places, just like a magic trick. And the end, the prestige, is indeed prestigious. Brilliant end, ambiguous, non-specific, and yet perfect. So... That's Inverted World. Uh, this is a short video, I know. I just finished it last night. I'm still uncertain what I could possibly read next. It's going to have to be a complete sideways. No nor normal classic sci-fi is going to stand up after this one. Can't recommend it enough. But aside from re-emphasising how much I love the actual writing, how much the day-to-day -day writing skill is marvellous in this book, some people might find it a bit slow because it builds so infinitely, delicately, weaves itself together. Um, everything relying on the fact that you know and enjoy everything previous. Yes, so Christopher Priest, Inverted World, I thoroughly recommend this book. I think I was reminded of it recently by someone on Goodreads, possibly one of the English channels that I follow. Anyway, I'm so glad to have been reminded about Christopher Priest. I'm so glad to, I think it was Chinda's bookshop where I found Inverted World. I definitely want to chase up more Christopher Priest 
I'm sorry I don't have any more in my collection. Otherwise, I'd probably go and reread them right now. Thank you for watching this review. I hope it's nice and summery and beautiful wherever you are in the world. And I hope the sun comes out here soon. And read good books. Thank you for watching. And comment and subscribe and all those YouTube things. But whatever. Just read good books. <laughs>